Hi, my name is Roger Harris, and the obvious question is, what does parental nutrition have to do with sex? And I'm afraid to tell you nothing, but I couldn't actually call my talk the physical and chemical properties of parental nutrition and expect you to open it. So, knowing the audience, I've put sex in the title, and surprise, surprise, here you are. However, before you switch it off, just stick with me for a couple of minutes, and I'll tell you some really important facts about parental nutrition. This is the first talk in a series on PN, and it's about the physical properties of the solution. These are important because we just can't throw a bunch of chemicals together in a bag and hope they won't react or precipitate prior to us infusing them into our patients. Other talks in the series will deal with what's actually in the PN and how you calculate the energy needs for your patients. But this talk will deal specifically with solubility and stability. PN is perhaps the last magic bag of tricks left in the ICU. We argue about the accuracy of cardiac output devices and debate ad nauseum about the benefits of one fluid or another. However, when it comes to PN, we often write up a prescription with little regard for what's actually cloaked behind the light impervious overpouch. So let's lift the veil on this magic bag of tricks and try and understand what's inside it. First, if we consider what the objectives are in administering the PN, I see these as threefold. One, to deliver macronutrients for energy sources and also to replace damaged proteins. Secondly, to provide micronutrients, trace elements and vitamins. And finally, to provide fluid for hydration. This makes it sound pretty straightforward, but the problem is, is that many of the 40 substances included in the PN are reactive and they don't mix well together. Mixing substances is called compounding, and before we can compound a solution like PN for intravenous administration, we need to understand aspects about its solubility and stability. Solubility refers to dissolving a substance in solution and avoiding precipitation, which for an intravenous therapy would be catastrophic to the patient. Stability, on the other hand, refers to maintaining the substance in its active form and not allowing it to react with other substances or be degraded by reactions such as oxidation. This is critical because if you think about the thought that goes into mixing up a single medication for intravenous uh, injection and what we dilute it with, and then you multiply that concern by 40 or more for the various compounds in the PN, and then multiply it again for all their interactions with each other, you can see where the problem is. In the early days of PN, it was administered as separate components. This meant that the substances didn't actually mix until they were inside the patient. And of course, that resulted in a range of complications. As the components were administered via separate lines, the total parental nutrition, as it was known then, looked something like a Christmas tree with multiple bottles hanging simultaneously. The frequent accessing and changing of lines and solutions was probably the biggest factor associated with PN-related line sepsis in these early days. The challenge in the past 20 years has been to compound the PN solution into the all-in-one type bags that you're familiar with today. This has meant overcoming problems with solubility and stability. Firstly, with solubility, the pharmacist compounding the PN has comprehensive guidelines governing the mixing of substances in the solution. Extensive laboratory tests are conducted to measure the solubility of the solutions when each component is added. If a practitioner requests certain components in the PN, the pharmacist will consult these guidelines to ensure that they are compatible. Now, with regard to stability, this is affected by many physical and chemical reactions and these in turn are influenced by factors such as the ambient temperature, oxygen content, exposure to light and the duration of time that the components are exposed to each other. Therefore, the stability of the solution can be improved by controlling these ambient conditions. For instance, the temperature can be easily reduced by refrigerating the PN and exposure to light is reduced by an opaque overpouch. Minimising the ambient oxygen tension has been made possible by constructing PN bags with multiple layers, one of which is vacuum sealed. Finally, the duration of time that the individual components are exposed to each other has been greatly reduced with the development of multi-chamber bags. 
The commonly seen triple chamber bags have separate compartments for glucose, amino acids and lipids. When these bags are removed from storage, the all-in-one solution is activated by rolling the bag, which breaks the internal chambers and results in mixing of the solution. What this means to us in practical terms at the bedside is that if you have a simple triple chamber bag that doesn't contain vitamins or trace elements, then it can probably be stored on the shelf for up to two years. If you want vitamins and trace elements added, this will greatly increase the reactivity of the solution and therefore the stability is affected. The bag now needs to be refrigerated and the shelf life will decrease dra drastically down to about one to three months because the vitamins in particular will probably degrade. In summary, compounding a solution with over 40 substances in it is incredibly complex and requires careful consideration of solubility and stability. However, we can overcome many of those challenges by controlling for some of the ambient conditions such as temperature, oxygen temperature and light. Additionally, we can reduce the amount of time substances are spent mixing together by storing them in separate compartments in a triple chamber bag. So next time, before you prescribe PN, take a moment to lift the veil of the light impervious cover and examine the contents underneath.